Oh, today, the one twelve twenty two, we talked um, part B of uh, section chapter four, section two. Um, started off by looking at reminding ourselves of how this summation notation works. So I've asked the class to do this um, exercise a a and said if k goes from one to five, figure out what this sum is. And so we put 1 in for k, 1 squared is 1, plus 2 is 3. Then you put 2 in, 4 plus 2 is 6. Then you put 3 in, 9 plus 2 is 11. Then you put 4 in, 16 plus 2 is 18. Plus, you put 5 in, 25 plus 2 is 27. And if you add those up, I think you get 65. Okay. Then this one, we were supposed to write it in summation notation. I'll use I. Could use K. Could use any letter. I want to start it at 1. And let's see. How many terms do we have? 3, 4, 7, 11, 15, plus 4. It looks like it's going up by four, so the mean 19 would be the one, two, three, four, fifth term, 23, the sixth term, 27, the last term, the seventh term. So if I go from one to seven, since this is going up by four each time, I'd go four times i. When I put in one, I get four times one is four, but I want three. So if I take away 1, that would work. If I put in 2, I get 8 minus 1, 7. In fact, if you look at these, these look like multiples of 4. 4, 8, 12, 16, minus 1. And that's what this is doing. Okay. So then I said in class, let's think of a parabola or any function, but I, I decided to use a simple one, a parabola. Um, so my function could be like x squared. Okay, and let's say I wanted to find the area under the curve between 1 and oh, 3, or any interval a to B. So I'm going to do general notation and specific to this problem notation. So let's say we wanted to do a right hand sum. That turns out to be kind of the easier one. And we want to split it n times. Okay, so if I'm going to split this n times, uh, if n's a small number like 2, there would only be two rectangles. But if n is 10, there'd be 10 of them. So they're going to be skinnier. I'm go, I'll, I'll go hit, draw them about this wide. And I'll go dot, dot, dot. And then the last one or two would be like here and there. But if I'm doing right hand, I'd be going to the right side and going across and down to the right side, cross and down. Cross and down, dot, 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 cross and down, and cross and down. And for notation, I could say this first spot is x0. The next spot on the line is x1. The next spot is x2. The next spot is x3. Three, these are spaced, but I don't have room here. I want to keep it closed. And the second to last one would be x of n minus 1. And the last one would be x n, since I have n of them. Okay? So that's the notation here. Now I said in class, what are, what would be another way to describe these x0, x1, x2. And so, well, x 
zero is just the start of the interval, which would be A, or in this specific case, it would be 1. X1 would be A plus the width of the interval. Well, how wide is this? By making it n divisions from 1 to 3, or from A to B, I would take the distance from 1 to 3. That would be 3 minus 1, or B minus A, and divide it by n. Oh, and in this particular case, it would be 3 minus 1, which is 2 divided by n. And the book uses the notation at delta x to describe the width of each of these rectangles. So x1 would be a plus the width of a rectangle, or if you will, a plus um, B minus A over N. Or in this particular case, uh, 1 plus 2 over N. And then X2 would be A plus 2 widths over 2 delta X's or A plus 2 B minus minus A over N's, or in this particular case, um, 1 plus 2, 2 over N's. And the next one, X3 would be a plus 3 widths over, or A plus 3 of the B minus A over 2, or over N, which in this particular case would be 1 plus 3 times 2 over N. So, and in particular, any x in here, x sub i, would be, as you can see, it's 1, 2, or 3 of these, or 1, 2, 3. So it would be, um, in this particular case, it would be 1 plus i times 2 over n. So if I were doing the right-hand sum, it would be, the sum, I would start at 1 and go to N, and it would be the width of the interval, which is delta X, or 2 over N in this particular case, times the height on the right-hand side, so that would be F of the right-hand side, which would be x1, but x1 is 1 plus 2 over n. But then when i is 2, I want to have two of these, so I'm going to put i there. So this would be 1 plus 1 width, which would take me to here, not to 1, but to 1 width over. And then when i is 2, it would take me to that spot. And when i is 3, it would take me to that spot, figure out the height, f of that, times the width. Okay? If I had to do left ones, well then, everything's going to be the same, except that I want to not do one width over. I want to start counting right from here, the height there, the height there. So I can do that by just saying 
lets i go from 0 to n minus 1. Instead of doing from 1 to n, we we'll do from 0 to n minus 1. And so it would be 2 over n f of 1 plus i times 2 over n. Now, if I were to try to do the midpoint one, it's a little trickier. Because it's got to go halfway between. So, my solution for that is to do i equaling 1 to n. The width of each bar is still going to be the same, 2 over n. But the height will be found at, not there, not at x1, not at x0, but halfway between. So to do that, I'm going to go start at a, or 1, back up a half a width. Now, the full width in this particular case is 2 over n, so if I back up a half a width, that would be back up 1 over n. So I'm going to move back a half, and then when i is 1, it would add 1 width, so plus i times 2 over n. And that would get me to the middle of that first rectangle. Find the height there, and then the height there and so on. And so that would be the midpoint one. Starting place, back up half a width, half a delta x, and then I full delta x's. Okay? So, then in class, what I did was say, okay, let's figure these out for R4 and L4 for and for M4. So R4, since we're doing F, F takes the X, this is what the X we're going to do, and it says square it. So, and if we're doing 4, it would be the sum from 1, I equal 1 to 4, 4 of 2 over 4, which is 1 half, f, which says square the x, and this would be 1 plus 2 over 4 is a half times i. So putting in 1, 2, 3, and 4, 1 I get... Um, 1 plus 1 half, which is 3 halves squared, is 9 fourths times a half is 9 eighths. Put in 2, 2 times a half is 1, plus 1 is 2, times a half is uh, 2 squared is 4, times a half is 2, plus put in 3, 3 times a half is 3 halves, plus 2 halves is 5 halves, squared is 25 fourths times a half is 25 eighths plus last one 4 times a half is 2 plus 1 is 3 squared is 9 times a half is 9 halves and I think if you work that out you get 20 uh, 10 and Three quarters? I'm trying to remember what we got in class. Something like that. No, ten and five eighths, maybe it was. I can't remember. Something, ten and something. Uh, if we do the left, we do the same same stuff, except we're gonna go from zero to three. Width of the interval would be still one half. We'd be doing one plus one half times i. 
squared. We put in zero and we get one squared times a half is a half. And then we put in one and that would be the same as putting one into here. So we'd get nine eighths. And we put in two, we get two, and then we put in three, we get 25 eighths, and that turns out to be six and something, same something that that one is. Let me see, I'll, let me see if I can figure this out here. Um, one and an eighth and three and an eighth. So one and, and two, three, six, and three, eight, one eighth, and one eighth is one fourth, plus a half is three fourths, six and three fourths. So this was three fourths also, I think. Okay. What if we do M4? This one's a little bit more complicated. I equaling one, two, four, which says I'm doing four. Two over four is a half. And then F means, in this case, as square them. So I'm going to square what I got in here. And it's going to be one minus one fourth, which is three fourths plus um, I times one half. Which equals, when I is one, one half plus three fourths is two fourths plus three, five fourths squared, 25 sixteenths times a half is 25 30 seconds. Plus, put in two, I get uh, one plus three fourths is seven fourths. Squared is 49 sixteenths times a half is 49 32. Put in three, three halves, which is one and a half plus three fourths is two and a quarter or nine quarters squared is 81 sixteenths times a half is 81 30 seconds. And then putting in four, I got uh, two plus three quarters, that's eight, I said 11 quarters squared is 121 sixteenths times a half is 121 30 seconds, which is eight and uh, five eighths. That's where the five eighths came in, I think. Five eighths. Then I said, let's do one more. Let's do the trapezoidal rule. Well, the trapezoidal rule, if we make a trapezoid in here, uh, let me do a larger one. Then we, then we want to do not the midpoint, but we want to take the height at this place and the height at this place and find the average of those two heights. Well, Right does all the heights on the right side. Left does all the heights on the left side. So the trapezoid would be nothing more than the average of left and right. It's the left plus the right divided by 2, which turns out to be halfway between these two. So 10 and 3 fourths, 6 and 3 fourths, it would be 8 and 3 fourths. Now, if, so the trapezoid is just the average of the left and right, and that's always true. The midpoint is the trickiest one. Now, um, if this was a velocity equation, let's say it said velocity of time was t squared, then the antiderivative of velocity is the displacement curve, 
And that would have been the antiderivative of t squared would be 1 third t to the third, because if I take the derivative, 3 times 1 third is 1, t to the 1 less than 3 is 2. So the derivative of this would be that. And if I'm trying to find it between 1 and 3, I could put 3 into here and find where the position is at 3. 3 to the third is 27 times 1 third is 9. So s of 3 is 9. And s of 1, the position at 1, would be 1 to the third, which is 1 times 1 third, 1 third. So the area under here uh, expresses the change in position. Well, it looks like it changed from 1 third to 9, so we would take 9 minus 1 third and get 8 and 2 thirds. Okay, uh, that that be s of three minus s of one. Nine minus one third, which is eight and two thirds. That turns out to be the actual area under the curve, and that tends to be the easier way to do it than doing all these sums. Now, we calculated with uh, four sections, and this would have been t of four. I guess I did it with four here. So uh, this would be t of four, eight and three quarters. And the answer is eight and two thirds, which is halfway between these two halfway between the midpoint and um, trapezoidal, somewhere in between them, okay? So, that's the correct answer. Looks like several of these are overestimates, some are underestimates, but that's the correct area. And what we're going to get in the next section is that the, the if we took the limit with making more and more rectangles, n instead of just 4, maybe 8 or 16 or 100 or whatever, go to infinity, an infinite number of rectangles, then the right-hand one would get closer to the correct answer, and so would the left-hand one, and so would the midpoint one, and so would the trapezoidal one. And these are all sums of rectangles. So we could say, oh, we want to do sums. It's kind of a elongated S from A to B or from 1 to 3. The sum of the area from A to B under the curve F of X dx. And that's what we're getting to. This is the limit of these, which in this case, the right hand was an overestimate, the left hand was an underestimate, midpoint was closer, and, and the trapezoidal was closer. But as you make more and more of these intervals, they all become closer and closer to one value, this correct value, which is kind of what this is telling us to do. Find the antiderivative of this and then subtract the difference. Subtract the two places, the, the position at the two places. Okay? Then, I asked, I took a few moments in class, at the end of class, to say, Please look at the app that's got a link in the book. It's in figure uh, 4.2.6. It allows you to play with 
different intervals under a curve. You can change the equation. You can change whether you're doing left or right or any place in between. And you can change the number of rectangles. Get yourself familiar with that app 4.2.6. Okay?